Hello friends, greetings from Thegama again on this 27th day of our, of our lockdown. I'm sorry, you may be hearing a, a little bit of noise from what I think is a generator somebody started up on the other side of town. I was hoping it was a, a tractor, which quite often happens, and then it would move on, but it's not, so I think it's a generator. Hopefully you can still hear me good. Okay, well, it's uh, Easter Friday. And many of us are thinking, as in preparing for Sunday especially, for a special service, looking um, in a special way at the Lord's death and burial and resurrection. That will be our focus on Sunday. And it will definitely be one of the most unusual Easter Sundays of our lives. And uh, another thing about these, this series of Bible characters and their confinements and so forth, I'm going to be running out of characters pretty soon. Uh, thank you for many of you who have suggested topics and I have several more that I that I'd like to do there's many possibilities but I don't uh, feel comfortable with all of them doing all of them so it'll we'll see I'm not sure how long I'll be able to go on go on with this and then of course as soon as our quarantine and confinement's over then doing them every day is going to be impossible every weekday but I do have uh, I do have an idea for another series I would like to do and thinking about it, praying about it, and if the Lord uh, guides in that way, then I would like to continue putting out these videos, even though it may not be nearly as much. Okay, today I would like to focus on Jacob <clears throat> and a very special night he had. Okay, I'd like to read in Genesis 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone... And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Then um, I'd like to read as well from Hosea, where in the middle of, of prophecies about Israel and Ephraim, up pops two verses that give us some, shed some light on what happened that night there near the brook Jabbok. As, it, uh, as it's called, in Hosea 12, verse 3 and 4, the, the prophet looks back, or the prophecy looks back, and says, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, obviously that's dealing with Jacob, although he represents Israel here in the prophecy, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him, he found him at Bethel, and there he spake with us. And so, so we get some interesting insight. We'll look into it in a little bit from Hosea. Okay, a little bit of the timeline of Jacob. It's not that easy. Uh, you got to do a lot of numbers, and I took some of this stuff from, from Internet, and I'm going to take their word for the math and all of that. We know he lived 147 years, died there in Egypt. He was born, Jacob was born when Isaac was 60. Different days than what we live in today, for sure. He was in his 70s when he cheated his father and Esau. He was already in his 70s. And then he had to leave for Haran. And he spent 20 years with Laban, his uncle, We'll look a little bit more about that later. And the, so Jacob was over 90 years old when he had Joseph and when he returned to Israel fleeing from his very upset uncle. Okay, so that's a, a broad view of it. Now, for, about, for over 90 years, Jacob was a swindler, a cheat. His name means heel Caesar, supplanter, and he was every bit of that. I want to read some, a few passages today from one of my favorite of all books called Knowing God by J.I. Packer. It's a classic. If you've never read it, please do so. It's a fantastic book on the doctrines of God, and I've, I've read it 20, 28 times in 28 years. And every time I finish it, I say, man, i got to read this again next year, and so I do. Well, anyway, I want to read a couple of things that he says about this whole scene with Jacob. First of all, he says, um, Jacob was a self-willed mother's boy, blessed or cursed, 
with all the opportunist instincts and amoral ruthlessness of the go-getting businessmen. That's how he eloquently describes, or part of how he describes Jacob. Okay, so in, in, in this chapter 32, in verse 30, which I don't, let me see, did I read this before? No, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, okay, yeah, we read where Jacob fought with God, and then we see a little bit more about that fight in Hosea in chapter 12. Okay, the river is called Jabbok, okay, and I'm going to put up, first of all, a map so you see where it comes into the Jordan, about halfway between the Dead Sea and, the, and Galilee, you can see it coming in there, into the Jordan from what is today the country of Jordan, and then there's a picture, one of the many pictures that shows up of the river, and so he, for, he, he sends his family on ahead, and he stays behind, and he wrestles with a man, a capital M, for, I guess, about eight hours. Now, this wrestling was a physical wrestle, but it was also spiritual. It was a spiritual and physical wrestling match. Isn't that the way it is with us as believers? Our physical struggles, be it health or or job situations or other situations, they are physical, but they are also spiritual. I remember very clearly when I've had a number of kidney stone attacks. I'll never forget them. But in the middle of those kidney stacks, there was spiritual work going on, and God was working in my mind and in my heart. Not fun, the experience, but it was both physical and spiritual, and this was a mixture of it as well. Okay, so for 90 years, until that moment, 90 years, Jacob had refused to submit to God and to allow, and to allow God to change his character. He was a swindler, he was a cheat, and he had gotten very good at it. Now, he wanted protection from God for Esau because Esau was coming after him and he was sure Esau was going to kill him. But God wasn't about to give him that blessing, wasn't about to give him the promise until he emptied Jacob of himself and they're, they're in that wrestling match. In Hosea, we read, we see two things. First of all, he wept, which shows us his his brokenness that he came to in that, in that wrestling match. And then that he prevailed with God, which means he submitted to God. He won the battle, we could say, with God by submitting and humbling himself. The permanently dislocated hip was something he would and could never forget. He limped for the rest of his life to remember that moment, that night. Changing his name from Jacob to Israel was meant to make a huge point. God was focusing in on this event, so he changed his name, Jacob, which meant some planter, basically cheat, to Israel, which was powerful, prince of God. And then Jacob changed the name of the place to Peniel, which means face of God. And I, I, I see the significance there as being not only that he met God face to face, which he says, so that, that angel, that man, was the Lord Jesus, but he also shows us that he understood he got the point, and he changed the name of that place. It became a, a place he would never forget because he understood perfectly what, what had gone on. And so then I want to read... And, oh, I forgot to read earlier something about Laban. So I'm going to read that, too, here from JPEG. I had three little things I wanted to tell. Here's, here's uh, Packer's description of Laban. He went to his uncle Laban, who proved to be as tricky a customer as Jacob himself. Laban exploited ja Jacob's position and bamboozled him, I love that phrase, bamboozled him into marrying not only his pretty daughter, whom Jacob wanted, but also the plain one with bad eyes, for whom he would otherwise have found it hard to get a husband. Jacob's experience with Laban was a case of the bitter bit. 
And so anyway, he goes on, but that's just a little thing, a little bit. And But here I wanted to see, where was this? Oh yeah, um, so here is another description uh, or basically a summary. Uh, Jacob had hitherto been self-reliant, believing himself to be more than a match for anything that might come. But now, after the fight, he felt his complete inability to handle things and knew with blinding, blazing certainty that never again dare he trust himself to look after himself and to carve out his destiny. Never again dare he try to live by his wits. Beautiful, eloquent. Well, I love the way it reads. Okay, so that's Jacob. Okay, after that fight, Jacob was never the same. He lived another 57 years. He was different. No, he wasn't perfect, but he was a different man from that moment on. So some observations. Times of quarantine, isolation, confinement, crisis like this are times God gives us to think, to reflect, to wrestle with God about who we are, how we are, what needs to change in our life. We want to come out of these times cleaner, more useful, closer to God. Jacob's story is our story, really. We are all Jacob at first. God wants to turn us into Israel. He wants to change us. We can always be cleansed we always can use more cleansing of that taproot of pride that never totally dies in our life. Okay, one final thought. In Genesis, again, chapter 48, at the end of his life, Genesis 48, verse 11, Israel, and Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has showed me also thy seed. And he went on to bless his grandchildren. Fantastic story, that one too. But anyway, so uh, Israel, formerly Jacob, died a happy man. But his life was a very turbulent journey because of his choices. We all know what it, uh, what it is to make bad choices, right? And to suffer the consequences of those choices. This, blow, this story tells us to submit ourselves and humble ourselves so that God can turn our Jacob into Israel. What a tremendous story. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.